Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about this sword right here. It is the Chines Moko Katana, the non-Bohi version, at least from what I can tell. It looks like it retails for about $219 if you can get it from Chines' website right now. I don't think you can. It says uh, temporarily halted, and I believe that's because we're in the midst of a global pandemic. But I will include a link in the description to Chines' website down below if you are so inclined to purchase this sword. And hopefully after the world gets through this mess, uh, you will be able to purchase one if you are so inclined. Anyway, uh, before I get into the nitty-gritty of the review of this sword. There's a couple things you should know. One, this sword was sent to me for the purposes of review from sword friend Jack. Now Jack sent it to me because he didn't want any more, he didn't particularly like it, so he cleared his collection out and sent it to me because I like swords. And so, you should know that two things from that. One, it's uh, it's a second-hand sword and therefore may not be representative of what you would expect to get if you were to buy one from Chines brand new. I think it's pretty representative. He said he didn't use it much and didn't look like it had a lot of use on it, so I think it is, but know that beforehand. Also, it's a gift, and it's hard for me not to be overwhelmingly positive and happy about gifts, particularly when they're not sent from companies, but just from fellow sword friends out there, because I enjoy swords. He passed this very generous gift on to me, so I have some very positive vibes coming from it. it it's nice to get those kind of things. I'm always humbled when that happens, and, uh, and so I, I do feel quite positive about this sword, but I will try to be objective. To temper that objectivity, I should also note some personal bias. I have had many Chines products in the past. Granted, it's been a number of years. I don't generally seek them out because I haven't been a fan of them in the past. I've had uh, not particularly this Moko Katana, but I've had the SGC and, well, a myriad of other Chines Katana that I am probably showing you in the video right now. And in a nutshell, I just haven't been overly enthusiastic about them. They've either been kind of cumbersome and heavy, not particularly sharp, or they had some sort of feature that bit my hand, or there was something, something about them that I didn't particularly like. Now, that said, it's been a number of years, and I like to think that I've I've learned a little bit in those years, and hopefully I can approach this with a fresh set of eyes, or at least slightly more learned eyes. Anyway, I'm going into it not necessarily overwhelmingly positive about the company, but I'm going to be objective, I'm going to show you the stuff, and hopefully what I say doesn't matter, the data and all of the blah 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 will will do all that for you. Anyway, the last bit I should note is that I am a martial artist, I do study Japanese swordsmanship, but I'm not a master, I'm not particularly good at it, I'm certainly not very far along in the journey, so take my... Take my thoughts as they are, just as that of a novice, an enthusiast in the sword realm, and with, you know, all that context in mind, here we go. All right, as I do, I'm going to start with the pommel, the butt cap, the kasha at the end right here. And there's a couple things I want to note. First and foremost, this is like a glossy black, and then the color on the fuchi is a kind of a satin black, and then the suba is somewhere in between. Uh, that's not necessarily problematic, but it does, it is a little bit weird, I have to say. I can't necessarily... Uh, wrap my head around why they would be different, but they are, and that's that's fine. It's a two hundred nineteen dollars sword. Most of my expectations are going to be very tempered in this in this price point. Anyway, uh, what I'll say is that it does all the things that it really needs to do. It has some level of detail on it, though uh, the casting quality seems muddy. It's not as good as some of the swords in this price point. It's not as bad as others. It could be worse, and I like that the fittings don't really try to overdo what they can't do. It's a simple black. The casting quality is is mediocre, but the detail on it is also not terribly embellished, so it's not mucking up something. Uh, you know, the, a lot of times swords will try to cast something really, really elaborate and fail miserably, and then you're left with this kind of miserable failure to stare at. Uh, when you have something a little more simple like this, uh, you know, the, the muddy casting is not necessarily the worst thing. Uh, one thing I will note is that there's a slight ledge here that I can rub my finger on. It does bite into my skin. It's not comfortable, but I will note that in using this sword, I didn't really exper experience any discomfort while using it. I did cut with it. I did do Yaido with it for a little bit, and I didn't notice it. I don't cut with a glove on or anything like that, so as I move my fingers on it, it didn't bite into me, it didn't cause cause any particular problems that are that are worth noting. I just note it as an, as an observation here. Uh, the transition here is a little muddy on one side, not so bad on this side with the ledge. Uh, the knots are a little loose as I talk about the, the overall scot. I do have to note that I like, actually like the shape of this scot, and I like the look of it as well. If I look at the shape first, in a nutshell, it just it feels good in my hand. It's not too big, it's not too small, it has a slight waist here. It's a little swollen right here before the fuchi, but that's not bad or necessarily untraditional. I also like this cotton ito. It feels good in my hands. It's reasonably tight in the middle, though the end sections and some of the spots on here are a little a little loosey-goosey. I'll show you that in just a second. But I do like the way this kind of aged, decrepit cotton looks. Um, it's, it's a little different, it's a little uh, frayed, it's a little... Uh, 
kind of rugged looking, but I have to say I like it, and I like the feeling of this cotton on my hands more than I do a really basic synthetic silk, which is what a lot of swords in this price point tend to come with, is some imitation silk, um, and it feels slippery and kind of crappy in the hand. This feels soft where it needs to, but hard enough, and I, I bet it's going to age <laughs> age really ruggedly as it has, but I do have to say I like it. Anyway, uh, the Ito, if I show you here, it is loose in some spots, namely around the Fuchi area here. You can see it moves around pretty easy, but in other spots um, it's acceptably tight, I would say. This is not unsymptomatic of many things. It's looser at either end, but in the middle it's okay. It's not as loose as some are, but it's uh, not as tight as I suppose you would want it. It doesn't rattle. It feels okay. The Minuki quality on here are also kind of a lackluster casting quality. Again, kind of on par with many of the other swords in this pricing category. Uh, the Samegawa is panels underneath here. I can make some of that out as I expose the wood underneath here. And the, the Samegawa panels have small nodules on them. They're not particularly detailed, but again, not really expecting it to be just you know, what you what you would expect. One thing I do want to draw attention to here, though, is this brass makugi. Now, there's a, um, a bamboo makugi here and a brass one, and this is something I've seen on a lot of chines swords, something I like. I have had makugi break. I have missed that they've broken. I've done sword testing before where I've whacked a sword into things and then found when I would go to pound the makugi out that it actually broke in half already, and it's just kind of staying in there out of willpower alone. So this brass pin here is a cheap addition. It's not expensive to do that, and it does make it a little safer. Um, I, I do like that that addition as a practitioner. I like to see these these brass makugi in here, so good on you there, Chines. If I move on to the Fuchi up here, this is actually my favorite fitting. Now, it's a little dull in this spot here, but at the same time, the casting quality on the Fuchi seems a step above uh, the Kasha area. It's a little more detailed. The casting seems a little bit crisper. The transitions line up. Now, it's unfortunate that the Ito is so loose around here, but the transitions line up, and overall, uh, it seems reasonably well executed. If I go to the Suba, note that it has a little wiggle. Could be that it's secondhand. It's only horizontal wiggle, though. It doesn't move kind of laterally so much, so this is something I could pretty easily remedy with a nail set. It just needs to be pounded on. It's something that'll happen over time, so it doesn't surprise me that this sword, being a few years old, being secondhand, has has this kind of wiggle to it. As for the quality of the Suba, again, I like that Chines didn't really try to do something it wouldn't be able to do. This design in particular works well on inexpensive swords, at least in my mind. Uh, it has basically what looks like a raised rim around it, so I'm not expecting casting to be around the outside rim. Uh, the details in here are this kind of stippled, uh, kind of texture, stone kind of texture area here. It's emulating what I believe is a Tsukashi Suba. Now inside here, these ledges are sharp, and I don't particularly like that. If I bring my fingers up here and I really choke up on the guard, uh, my skin does rub in here uncomfortably. That's something I don't like. It'd be nice if these were tamfered, but uh, honestly, they're not so bad. I recall the SGC Katana as I put my fingers up here. It really kind of bit into it. This isn't so bad. I have to almost attempt to do it, uh, but if you really ride up on the guard, that might be a problem for you. It does bite in ever so slightly. Am I bleeding now? Just a little bit. Anyway, the point is, I don't necessarily like that, but you have to almost intentionally do it as I just did. I didn't notice it during practice, but I don't generally tend to stick my hand right up towards the guard. Anyway, aesthetically speaking, I like the look. The cutouts are clean. The casting quality is pretty decent. And so overall, I like I like the execution on the guard. Again, I'm not expecting the world. This is a $219 sword for the execution that I'm seeing here. It seems completely appropriate and well fit. I would like the fittings if they matched a little better, at least the gloss pattern on here match the gloss pattern on here, and if they all had the same level of detail as the Fuchi, I suppose they'd be better, but honestly, again, $219, not expecting the world. The Habaki is a simple brass Habaki. It seems a little smaller than the counterparts from Hanwei, but overall, it's just a simple brass Habaki. It fits on the way you would expect it to, I suppose. It's not, not anything particularly special or unique. Uh, but it's on there. One thing to note is it doesn't stick out over the edge. I've seen that happen a few times. It doesn't jut out on, on either end. Uh, sometimes these are misfit or bad, and uh, and this, it seems, seems to be fit on as about as appropriately as you'd expect a sword in this price point. Other bits to note, the habaki does rest in the saya well, and the saya doesn't rattle. So if I take the sword and I put it in the saya, now, it's, it's not rattling. That's good. It doesn't fall out, but it doesn't take a lot of effort to push it out. As I talk about the Saya as well, this is the Sageo that it came with. I don't know if this is the original Sageo. It looks like it is. There's some imprint on, this, on the lacquer here from some of the 
uh, Segeo imprinting on here as if it was applied or tied on before it was really done. That's, again, something I see commonly enough, not necessarily something I like to see, but it's it's definitely something that other sword manufacturers uh, have done it before. But I do have to note the Segeo is thicker, um, and if this is the original one, then I like this more than a lot of the inexpensive swords that uh, that come with Segeo. They're usually kind of really simple, cheap Segeo, and this one is a little thicker, a little nicer, and so kudos there. It's also long enough to do all the things that I might, might want to do with Segeo. Sometimes it comes so short that I can't tie them on properly. This one is long enough and thick enough that it's it's comfortable. Uh, the Kurigata isn't cracked, it stays on there. The Saya doesn't, again, rattle, it holds, and honestly, as I do kind of no-toe and move it around, it glides in and out reasonably well. Um, the Koiguchi area is nothing particularly special. It doesn't really have a, a full horn Koiguchi from what I can tell, and the paint is a little rough, but nevertheless, uh, it does the job from a practitioner standpoint. In terms of using it, it was comfortable enough to do EI with. The Saya has glass, uh, gloss black on it, and it's got some pings and dings that came with it. <laughs> you might say, I don't know if they came that way from Chines, I would suspect not. Uh, but as you get it banged around, it chips, and it's, you know, I suppose easy enough to fix with a Sharpie. Uh, so it's not particularly durable in that sense. The lacquer isn't overly thick, from what I can tell, but it's what you would expect. In fact, it's a little better than I would expect from a sword at $219. A lot of times they rattle or something doesn't glide in and out right. This is actually about as well better than I would expect for $219. Also, transitions line up reasonably well here. Again, it's not perfect, but that's not what I'm looking for for the money. Uh, for what I'm seeing, it does it does the job in terms of how it transitions from Fuchi to Saya. It, it lines up reasonably well and all of that. One thing I don't particularly like about the Saya, though, is that it has some wax in it. And every time I do noto or draw the sword out, I get this gummy, waxy substance on it, and it's dirty, and I feel it on my hands, and I don't like it. As I'm moving the sword around, if I'm doing noto and move the sword around, I'll get little bits of wax on my hand, and it's just less than pleasant. So every time I, I cleaned it off just before I started doing this video, and you can probably already see there's bits of wax and kind of muck on here that are are less than good. Anyway, uh, it wipes off easy enough and I understand why there would be wax on it and that's that may <laughs> maybe why it doesn't rattle. I don't know if it has that much wax in there but uh, one thing I will say is that the wax abates rust so as it's shipping from across the seas or waiting to be sold to you it sits there and it doesn't rust and so you're less likely to get a rusty blade. I understand that but uh, it's I don't know, I, I think I prefer the oil method. It's easier to clean off. It stinks a little bit, uh, but I don't feel it on my hands and it comes off. I haven't had the same problems with the residual wax every time I'm doing Noto. Every time I take this sword in and out of the Saya, a little bits of wax get on there and it's it's tough to keep, keep clean. And I don't really know how to get the wax out of the Saya. Um, if you have ideas for that, throw them in the commentary down below. Anyway, polish-wise, this is everything I kind of expect. Um, it has some attempt at a, at a Kisaki and a Yokote there. Uh, but it's it's not much. Basically, I'm just expecting it to be shiny, and it is. It's a shiny blade. From my understanding, this is a 1060 blade as well. It's a through hardened blade, but there's some attempt at a kind of fake hamon here, as you can see, and it's it's pretty enough. It doesn't need to do really much, and the fact that they've attempted any kind of hamon is actually actually a pleasant thing. Aesthetically speaking, I'm just expecting the blade to be shiny. It is. Um, the planes on it are actually pretty good too. If I can get lined up in my camera here well enough. Let me see if I can not screw this up. Okay, camera work. Okay, well you can kind of see a little bit. It's acting like a mirror reflecting on the sword wall here, but you can see that it's not rippling around. The shinogi, the lines on the blade are reasonably clean. Uh, and the polish is, is shiny. It's certainly not artful, but it doesn't need to be. It's a $260 sword. Uh, some attempt at a fake hamon, subtle as it is, I like it. Uh, the lines being fresh and clean, I like that too. The last Chines blade I had was very ripply. That's something I recall from many of the Chines blades. This, these planes, these surfaces on the blade were not as, as clean and nice as this one is. So this is a good example, something I, I didn't see in the previous Chines blades I have, but this one I cannot deny is, is reasonably flat and good. One gripe I have is the Kisaki, and if you can see here, it just looks like it's a little off-center um, of being very nitpicky about this here, but overall I'm not really expecting anything great or grand. Just a note, overall I would say this is actually exceeding expectations in terms of quality level for finish at this price. No surface ripples, straight lines, an attempt on a, at a hamon in a through hardened blade without being wire brushed or really haphazardly done. Uh, overall this is this is perfectly sufficient for the money. Now the other thing that people wonder is, is it sharp? And when I got this blade, I was kind of 
touching it, and it doesn't feel particularly sharp, and I was not expecting it to do particularly well cutting-wise. So I did bring it out, and I did cut with it. I did a used Japanese tatami mat where I just swacked it in there, and usually swords of this level of sharpness, where it's, it's certainly not something I'd want to want to get hit with, but uh, it's not razor sharp, and usually that means that it's not going to be the best cutting experience as I'm cutting used Japanese tatami mats. They can be, uh, well, they usually require a razor's edge to really to really succeed, at least with my aptitude at cutting. But these moved right through the mat. I was very, very surprised. The cuts that I did were good. Um, the sword is not fun to move around. It's cumbersome. It's definitely tip-heavy. I won't describe it as a lively blade, but I'll put weapon dynamics in the in the thing down below. That said, despite its heft, I can move it around. It's not completely unwieldy, but at the same time, it wasn't particularly fun to do it. I wouldn't want to use this sword for Yaido a lot. It's I can, uh, and it does Noto well enough. The size is actually fit well enough and all of that where it's, it's reasonably comfortable and doesn't rattle and isn't janky in terms of user experience, but it's it's heavy and clubbish, and, and so I don't necessarily like the dynamics of the sword. Using it is, is okay. I like the feel of the cotton in my hand. I like the size of the handle, but the, the blade is just a bit a bit sluggish for me, a bit heavier than I feel it needs to be. So do I think it's worth the $219 for this sword? Well, in short, yes. I think it's a reasonable price to ask for a sword like this. If you are so inclined to buy one, you like the way this looks, you like the measurements, you like the weight or distribution or something about it, I certainly don't think it's a ripoff, at least for what I'm seeing here. There are things that do stand out about the sword that maybe others haven't in this price category really impressed me with, and that is one, uh, really the, the size is as, as odd as it is, that it doesn't bind and it slides in and out as well as it did, uh, is, is really actually pleasant from a Japanese swordsmanship practice perspective. Uh, that is, is reasonably impressive, and I do like the simple look on here, it's not overdone, but aesthetically it's, it's acceptable. Um, but it's really the, the Saya not binding that kind of impressed me at this price point, and the clean lines are not something that you get on all of the swords uh, in this price point. So I, I did like that. But the edge not being particularly sharp, the Ito not being particularly tight, those are things that are, are, are less impressive. And so at $219, I don't think it's a bad deal. If you like this sword or something about it, go on buy it. It seems like a fair price. That said, it doesn't do everything to really stand out among the competition. I think there's a lot of products out there that might offer more in the way of a sharper edge out of the box or more customization options. And so, well, I certainly don't think it's a bad deal. Um, it wouldn't be the place that I would go right away. And in fairness, I kind of expected not to like this sword at all. I mean, granted, I, I like it as a gift. I'm grateful to have it. But at the same time, I wasn't expecting to like it. Dynamically, I can't say that I do. But um, in terms of an overall package, I can't deny that it seems seems fairer than I expected and better than I expected, frankly. So anyway, those are my thoughts. I hope the review has been helpful, interesting. Uh, that's all I've got for you. As always, cheers, and thanks for watching. Also, special thanks to Sword from Jack for sending me this sword. Cheers.